Hi everyone, this is Nehama from Mark Intelligence and in this video I'm going to do a short tutorial on how to turn a Rhino object into a Revit loadable family. So let's start. Um, I'm going to start with the most simple example. Over here you can see I have this uh, Rhino block. As I click on it, you can see it's um, entirely in one layer. It's entirely just created as one object. And let's now go into Revit. Um, start a new file. This is, by the way, with our free default of landscape template, which you are uh, welcome to download. It will be in the comments. So I'm going to start a new file and let's go to a 3D view, go to environment for a bit and click on Rhino assets. So now I'm just going to um, click on add Rhino file and browse to find this file. There it is. All right. So I found it. I'm going to click on open. Um, notice you can change the units, you can um, change the level, you can import it as shared coordinates. These are not important to me right now since I just want to create a new family. So I'm going to click on OK. And you can see it on my screen. You can also see it on the show preview window. And as I open the drop down list of this Rhino file, I can open all the trees and just find this specific tree block. All I have to do to turn it into a Revit uh, loadable family now is click on these three dots over here. And instead of import as category, I'm going to choose replace with Revit family. And over here, I can create a new Revit family from this one. So I'm going to call it um, Rhino tree one. It's going to be under the planting category, of course. Um, so there it is. And the material can be by category. It can be um, taken from Rhino or just selected manually from uh, the library. I'm just going to go with by category now. Click on OK. And on the background, environment is actually creating the Revit family. Let's click on OK once again and click again on OK. And let's take a look at the result. So it's all grouped by default. Let's just ungroup that. Um, it's just the way we bring Rhino files uh, into Revit. Don't worry about that. So as I select that, you can see in the properties panel panel that this is a Rhino family. Uh, what's nice about it is that if I go to the type editing, um, environment is actually automatically identifying the height of the family, the original height in Rhino. And it kind of tr uh, translates this height into a planting family. So it's really convenient to use. Um, and then I could just change the height if I want it to be like, I don't know, 15 meters, click on apply. So now I have my family. Um, you can see that as I click on it, I can click on edit family and I'm going to get this uh, geometry in the um, editing, um, in the family editing window. All right. So this was really nice. And now let's see what, what happens if my original Rhino file is a little bit more complicated and what I can actually do to make it work. So in the next example, I went into the Beam Objects um, website and I just downloaded a free uh, three dimensional tree, which is really nice. And let's open it with Rhino. So I'm going to click on file open. And here is my tree. Continue. All right, here's my tree and let's take a look at it at our shaded view. You can see that I have two different uh, materials and two different layers. So I have uh, one layer for the um, for the leaves and then one layer for the trunk of the tree. And it's basically made out of two parts. So let's see what happens when I try to use the same tools to import this into Revit. I'm going to go again to environment, the Rhino assets tool, and then add another Rhino file. This time it's going to be the elm tree. Click on open. Um, you can see that environment automatically recognizes the um, original units of the file, but please make sure that this is correct. Let's click on OK. And we have our tree. So now if I open the drop down on this tree, you can see that I have two elements, one for the leaves and one for the trunks. And, and these are basically coming into Revit as two um, separate elements. So what I can do um, over here is basically turn both of them into separate Revit families, uh, planting families, and then nest them um, in, um, in, in the same uh, original family. So let's do it like that. I'm going to go to the three dots over here, replace with family, create new family, and let's say Rhino tree trunk. 
um, let's call it two. And again, the family will be planting family, applied material. I'm going to get it from the Rhino display color. Click on OK. Environment is creating the Revit family in the background from the original geometry. Click on OK now. And that was the trunk. So you can see that I have it um, listed over here. Now let's go with the leaves. I'm going to go over here, replace with Revit family, create new family. Let's call it Rhino um, Three Leaves. I think that's how you write it. Um, zero two import it as a planting family. And then again, I'm going to take the material from Rhino. Click on OK. An environment is creating the family in the background. Click on OK again. Click on OK again. And all right, so now I'm going to ungroup these, although I could have ungrouped them uh, through the original window. And you can see that I basically have two different families over here. And what I really would like to do is to connect them together. So I'm going to click on the trunk family and go to the edit family window. And I'm going to go back to the original file, click on the leaves family, go to the edit family window. Um, let's take a look at them at a shaded view. That's a lot nicer. All right. So what I want to do right now is um, to nest the, um, the leaves family in the trunk family because that's easier for me. Um, and I'm going to do it on a plan view for at the beginning. So I'm going into the leaves family. Let's go to load into project Rhino tree trunk. That's for sure. And yeah, go to plan view. And over here, I kind of have to guess, but I can make it more accurate in a second. So I'm going to guess a little bit, click on escape. And what I want to do is take a look at it um, from one of the um, elevation views, just like that. And then I could just make sure that it is in the correct elevation over here. Let's go like that. Take it a little bit up. And now let's go to the 3D view and just take a look at the result that we have. And it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Let's go to the elevation view again and just make sure that um, the tree is sitting on the reference level. Um, and that it has a reasonable height. So let's go from the bottom to the top. It looks like um, 29030. So let's take a look at the tie properties over here. And yes, I think that's more or less the height because don't forget that the 3D measurements are not exactly accurate. All right, so I'm pretty happy with my result. Let's go to load into project, load it to my original project. And let's say overwrite um, existing and its parameter value. So I could uh, very easily just create a new family, but now I just override the trunk family that I had. So now I have this new Revit family in my file. It's combined. So it's basically two nested Revit families. And you can see that if I go to the type editing, and of course, you know, I could have saved it as a new family with a uh, normal name, but you know, just for the sake of this video, um, let's just make it a tree that is 15 meters high, click on OK. And you can see how it changes and it's adaptable. So it's a, a totally a Revit, um, Revit family. Let's go to this section over here and take a look if I can get uh, the height. So I wanted it to be 15 meters. And that's more or less what I have until, not really until the last, um, the last branch, but you can definitely play around with it and, you know, um, modify it to suit your needs. And that's how you create a Revit family from Rhino Geometry really quickly. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to follow us on social media, LinkedIn, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, for more good content that is about to come. Thank you.